Right, so this practical shows a variety of different reactions. We've got uh, neutralization reactions, we've got displacement reactions. Um, and we are simply going to look at them in terms of energy change. Are they giving off energy to the surroundings or are they taking energy in from the surroundings? And the easiest, uh, most effective way to measure that is to measure temperature. So again, we're looking for exo or endo. And if a reaction is taking in heat energy, we would expect uh, that heat energy to be used, it's going to be converted into chemical energy. So, you know, the, the big misconception here is that if it's taking in heat energy, it will get hot. And actually, it's the opposite of that. If it's taking in heat energy and using that heat energy to drive the reaction, then actually it would decrease in temperature. So if the temperature drops, we're expecting it to be an endothermic reaction. And then the converse of that, if the reaction is giving off energy to the surroundings, we would expect that to be an increase in temperature. Okay, so I've already measured the starting temperature of all of these uh, different reactions. So I've already got the sodium hydroxide in here and measured the temperature. I've already got the citric acid in here, measured the temperature, ethanoic acid in here, the water in here, and the copper sulfate in here. Start temperature, as you'd expect, they're all the same. So we're going to add the hydrochloric acid to the first one. Okay, and again, we can see some fizzing occurring. Okay, so that's an, a good sign that this reaction is probably occurring. I'm going to add some sodium hydrogen carbonate, one spatula's worth, to the second boarding tube. Okay, again, a much more vigorous reaction, but definitely a, rea a reaction occurring here. I'm going to add the sodium carbonate to the third one. Again, one spatula's worth. And again, you can see very vigorous reaction occurring. Uh, to the water, I'm going to add some ammonium nitrate. Again, one spatula's worth. This is a pain because these are these little sort of little balls, little pellets. There we go. In they go. And finally, some zinc granules to that last one. Right, so again, we can clearly see uh, the reactions that have occurred in, in a few of these. Some of them are a little bit more subtle. I mean, there wasn't anything particularly exciting happening in either of these two. Um, but we should be able to see that a reaction has definitely occurred based on the temperature change. So let's have a look at this first one here. So the temperature of that one now is 30 degrees. This second one is now 18 degrees. This third one, give it a bit of a stir. Is now 25 degrees. This end one here, is now 20 degrees. And this last one here is now 26 degrees. So what we are looking for is the increase in temperature signifies an exothermic reaction. A decrease in temperature signifies an endothermic reaction. And again, even if it's subtle, this was an increase in temperature, so that is also exothermic. This one decreased, therefore it must be endothermic. And this one increased, so it must be exothermic. So remember, exothermic reactions have a positive temperature change, but a negative energy change. They're giving energy to the surroundings. And endothermic reactions have a negative temperature change. They get colder, but they're taking in energy, so they have a positive change in energy.